But if the buck doesn't actually stop there, I was faced with having to lay off most of my team. Mm. Uh, we weren't making our numbers and I'm, I must have stayed up all night pacing the floor for about a month, cool. trying to get to the place that I need to get to, um, you know, ruining my health and, you know, yeah. shattering my personal relationships for a little while because I had so internalized the, the angst of we're not making the numbers. It must be my fault. I need to be smarter. Where am I going to pull this next million dollars worth of revenue from? And that's a frightening place to be, isn't it? That's like you said, that's really not good for you in that situation. Wow. It, it's not. And, and before that, I, I had sort of written off CEOs as impulsive and, you know, just not very aware and, and putting myself in that chair, it turns out it's so much more situational than I had understood. And so when I'm coaching product folks, I'm always trying to start with the empathy, which is let's understand what's going on in your CEO's head. Let's understand the pressure that person's under, what they're really asking for and why they can't remember from week to week, the last week's roadmap, because it's not the thing they focus on. And, no, I mean, and I think it's so true. The CPO, they, you, you, you know, you live and breathe that roadmap. That is really yes. what's driving you, your department forward and how you're measured. And the reality is, is you, of course, you know that intimately and expecting anybody else to do that is really That's challenging. Right. Also, using it as an excuse or a reason not to do something is also can cause problems right. else. Cause you're right. I, I have the, I have, what's interesting about working with CEOs is I see that other side of that, where what might seem like an impulse is always a considered choice. And there's a lot, always a lot of thought gone into it. It might seem like it's a decision that happens quite quickly, but the reality is, as being a CEO, you can't always make decisions out in the open in terms of these situations. You have to be as quick sure. as you can, but these are things are always considered. They may not seem that, but that generally means because you don't have either the same information that the CEO has or an appreciation of the context that they're living and working within. Right. And I think that we can see that on both sides. We've talked about here in terms of the CPO having, you know, the product folks having more of a commercial outlook and the sales folks having more of a maker outlook to really understand what's going on the other side so they can have that wider context to really make and know what it means when they make these demands of one, of, one or another. Sure. Although I would say it's absolutely a requirement that the folks on the product side understand how commercial works. I would say that e expecting the sales organization to care and dig into how things are made and the processes, I think that's mostly a waste of energy. Absolutely. Because they don't have, they're, they're not, they're not made of the same, they're not cut from the same cloth. So that's right. they're, and, and they're not really interested. No, they're not exactly. They just don't really don't have that same level of interest in the details of things. They operate in a different place from a different angle. That's right. And That's so it right. seems, again, seems like they're impulsive, but they are working in a different world. So you're right. I think certainly what I see from CPOs who make that move up to the CEO role is they attempt to enact that kind of maker control thinking onto the organization where they try and structure the organization like the product organization where it's very much right. in control. You know what's happening all of the time. You know, you try to see in the future, you try to structure your business that way. And the reality is, is, you know, when you, ha you work in a commercial organization, you can't control right. the outcomes, it is impossible. You can, to a certain extent, control what you build and how you make things, but you right. cannot control outcomes such as sales or revenue or anything like that. Those are, those are items are not within your control. You can control the conditions to, for success, but you can't control the outcomes. In, indeed. And